Welcome to the first video on uncertainty. Now many students studying control and feedback in their degrees will quickly get the impression that it's all about performance and there's often a focus on things like what's the offset and what control law do you use to remove the offset or rise times and overshoot. However, the main reason for using feedback is in fact to deal with uncertainty. And this video is going to give a brief introduction into why that's the case. So what is the impact of uncertainty on system behaviour? Let's look at open loop control first. Here's an open loop system. You can see there's a signal U of S going into a block G of S and an output X equals G times U. Now assume the target R of S is known. You know what you want the output of this process to do. Can you therefore choose an appropriate input signal to ensure the output tracks the target? Well, hopefully you'll realize this is relatively easy. So if we want x to equal r, and we know that x equals g times u, then what that means is that r equals g times u. And I can therefore solve that to get u equals g to the minus 1 times r. So if I choose u this way, then in theory, I'll get exactly the output that I want. Now, just a little warning, we're ignoring any subtleties linked to g of s having right half plane zeros um, when we're making these comments. It will be irrelevant, as you'll see later anyway. So here's an example. We're going to do exactly the process that we've just suggested. Here we go. We've said u equals g inverse r. So if g equals 3 over s plus 4, and r is a unit step, 1 over s, then u is s plus 4 over 3s. So what we're going to do now is plot this input signal and plot the corresponding output to the process and see has it worked. Well, here you go. Now, this plot might look a bit weird at first. So what we'll do is we'll overlay it um, with some lines so you can see what's going on. The output has done this. It's actually followed exactly a step. And you might think, great, the output's done exactly what I want. It's followed a step, it's gone to one. However, you'll notice there's this funny green signal on the curve. So what's this green signal? Well, this is the input. And it includes, you'll notice, a spike at zero. Oops, something's gone wrong there. Sorry about that. The input includes an impulse. So at zero, you've actually got an impulse with the input. And in general, of course, impulses cannot be implemented. Not unless you want to go around hitting things with hammer, hammers, which we don't want to do in general. So albeit we've got the desired output here, we've done it by using a signal which cannot be implemented. So it's rather meaningless. Now, a more realistic feedforward, um, which I'm going to put down here exactly what we mean by feedforward. We've got a signal R, which is the target. We've got a signal U going into the process, which is the input. And then you've got your output, which we've called X. And what we're saying is there's a relationship be between the signal U and the target R, unsurprisingly. But if you want something that's more realistic, that will not um, ask you to produce signals which you can't actually implement. Something like one of one of a g of zero will do what you want, because that gives you the inverse of the steady state gain, and clearly in the steady state this will give you the desired target. So here's the figure you get when I use this feed forward one of a g of zero rather than one of a g of s, and you can see great, the uh, x has gone to the desired um, set point. There you are. You can see the steady state for x equals the steady state for R. I'm very happy. You can see that the input is now a step which is feasible and realistic. So your only question is whether you're happy with this response. So in other words, using a feed forward 1 over g of 0 will deliver good steady state tracking but it's reliant on the open loop dynamics being satisfactory. So here's another example. Now just for completeness, we've shown you what happens if you try and use this um, trick of saying u equals g inverse r. And you can see that the u you end up with here 
is s plus 4 times s plus 1 over 3s. It's not strictly proper. Um, you simply cannot build a real input signal that looks like that. And so the original idea is just not implementable. So instead, we're going to do the, uh, the trick that we said earlier. We're simply going to use 1 over g of 0 times r of s. And in this case, that gives you u equals 4 over 3s. So let's see what happens with this second order process. Here's the plot. And again, exactly as you've seen before, you've got good tracking. OK, the output has converged to the uh, desired target. You look at the input here and you say, yeah, the input's realistic. It's just a step. I'm happy. OK, and the only observation you might make is you might say, well, this output response is perhaps a little bit slow. It takes a while to get started and doesn't really track the target straight away. Could I track it better? Well, you can see the input has gone straight to the steady state. So the only way you could speed this output up would be by using larger inputs, i.e. by overactuating. And in general, you might not want to do that. So a simple overview. If you assume the open loop dynamics are reasonable, then choosing a step input of the correct magnitude gives you asymptotic tracking. So where the open loop dynamics are imperfect, you could design a slightly more complex feedforward to um, modify the transients a bit that might require overactuation. And so here you're saying, OK, why do we need feedback? What you've just shown me is that open loop control tends to do quite a good job. Why introduce feedback at all? Here's why. What we're going to do next is introduce parameter uncertainty. The engineer thinks that the system has a model G of S, which they can write down. Here it is, G of S equals 3 over S plus 4. But in fact, the real system is H of S. And you'll notice the parameters in H of S are slightly different. And this is very common. You very rarely can get the parameters of a model exactly for a real system. So now what we want to do is assess how this open loop control law, there it is, U equals 4 over 3 S, performs for the actual system as opposed to the uh, model. And here we go. And you'll see what's happened. I'll point it very clearly here, is the actual system has gone to a different steady state. It has not tracked the target. Because the input we've used is based upon the model parameters. And the model parameters are only estimates. So if they're wrong, then the steady state value of the input will be wrong. And so the output will be wrong. So clearly, the response of the actual system does not track the target. So what we've got is that open loop uh, control is actually not effective. And you'll see the differences in the parameters here are quite small. 3 has gone to 3.2, 4 has gone to 3.8. They're not big errors compared to a real system. And yet the difference in the steady state output is quite significant. What about a different type of uncertainty? Disturbances. And you'll notice what I've done here is I've said the model now looks like this. So the output depends upon the input. We'll put it down in the block diagram. There's the input U. But it also depends on another input, D. OK. Now, why does this happen? Well, in real systems, there is always some form of disturbance affecting the process. You can see examples. It could be the wind. If you've ever been on the bike, you know what it's like having a wind behind you or wind um, in front of you. It makes a huge difference to how much power you need to put into the pedals to get a given speed. So it's a bit like an additive effect, which is why we've got this model y equals gu plus the effect of the disturbance. And the block diagram here shows you how you would represent it in practice. So what we want to do now is look at how our open loop uh, control law works when we have this disturbance uncertainty. So here we go. We've plotted the uh, corresponding responses. And what you can see is there's clearly a big offset all right, between the output of the model, which obviously was perfect. But as soon as you include the disturbance, there's a difference between the two which is the magnitude of the disturbance. And so clearly, you are not tracking the um, target as desired. Now, this gap will always be the magnitude of the disturbance. So whenever there's a disturbance and you're using open loop control, you will be a certain distance away from where you want to be, which is the magnitude of the disturbance. 
So in summary, open loop control based on a feedforward compensator where you've got to estimate the parameters of the feedforward compensator using what knowledge you have of the process. It can work well, and here's the key thing, if the process is known exactly. If you know the model parameters and you knew the disturbance, you can make it work well. But in practice, you don't know that because the parameters are uncertain. So the gain, and I'll write it here, we were using 1 over g of 0, so the steady state gain is not known exactly. It's only known approximately. And so therefore, it doesn't work. And similarly, disturbances are never known in advance. And they can vary all the time. And therefore, you cannot compensate for them if you're using open loop control. So open loop control using a feedforward cannot deliver good tracking performance because of uncertainty.